welcome back to my channel. My name is Tina and today we're going to do another one of my makeup and murder true crime Sundays. This is a get ready with me so you will also see me doing my makeup. Please be aware there will be graphic content either in the form of pictures. What I'm discussing can be disturbing to some. I don't recommend it for small children. Um, this week there won't be anything too graphic. Today we're going to do a smoky purple eye. I'm going to use this Smashbox Trio here. For foundation, I'll be using the Wet n Wild and Tarte Shape Tape Foundation. The same for my concealers, Shape Tape and Wet n Wild. So Martha Needle was born in Melbourne, Australia. She moved back and forth between Melbourne and Airedale, I think is what it's called. I'm sorry if I get that wrong or mispronounce it. She was born there. Her early life, by all accounts, was pretty awful. She grew up in a violent and abusive household. She had some sort of mental illness, but I can tell you she was severely abused. So she got married to Henry Noodle at 17 to escape her family. She walked out of an abusive family and into an abusive husband. I suspect you guys, some of you, know exactly how that story goes. She was this beautiful, sweet woman. She enjoyed making her home. She enjoyed having, you know, cooking and being a mom. She had three children really quickly. She has Elise, who's six, May, who's four, and Mabel, who is three. And it isn't, by all accounts, a really great life. She made it the best she could. People knew that she was abused. It must have been pretty serious abuse because back then, they just ignored it. Um, women were property. So Mabel was born in 1982. And then in 1985, her youngest dies. She just sort of fades away, according to Martha. Children died all the time under the age of five back then. It was just a fact of life. So nobody thought too much about it. But she had a life insurance policy on Mabel and for $100. Now that doesn't sound like much now, but $100 back then would be about $40,000 today. So I'm gonna use this. About three years later, her abusive husband gets sick and he dies and she collects 200 pounds from his death. It is about $80,000. Then shortly after that, like by the spring, her daughter Elise is sick and dies re really quickly. And then a few months later, her other daughter May dies. Nobody thinks anything of it. This is a time period when children died, families died. You got sick, you got typhus, you got whatever. Throughout that year, Martha you know, she builds this whole grave to her family uh, with grave markers and everything. She actually spends almost all the insurance money on their graves and visits it every single day. Okay, so now I'm gonna go into this and use the base shade for my base, uh, this dark color here for my crease and this for my lid. In 1993, Martha Sublet attached property to a saddlery and meets Otto. Otto Junket. Otto runs a saddlery with his brothers, Louis and Herman. Well, the two of them start having an affair. And this is Martha's first taste of freedom. She's never been allowed to do anything. She grew up in an abusive household. She had an abusive husband. And she's finally, you know, okay, this is my life. I'm gonna live it how I want. She had to kill to do it, but she's gonna do it, right? Well, her family is like, no. Absolutely not. Otto's family says no, absolutely not. Well, they're still fighting and want to get married. It's the brothers mostly standing in the way. Louis gets sick. They think he's sick with typhoid. They're not sure. And he passes away. Problem solved, right? No, problem not solved. So then Herman, the older brother, comes and he's, you know, getting... Lewis's body sent back across the country and he's uh, absolutely against Otto and Martha getting married. So Herman's there and he's trying to settle the estate and he's fighting with Otto because they're still wanting to get married. His family is just like, no, this woman, you know, she's cursed basically and she's got some issues. I don't think she was like mentally retarded exactly, but she's one of those people that you just... They don't have both feet in reality. 
You know what I mean? He's like, oh no, you are not marrying her. And since Otto is the youngest brother, he's pretty much stuck with what his brothers tell him. She's sick and tired of being told what to do by them because they have nothing but make her life a living hell. Herman's there and he goes to her house several times, right? Because it's right behind the salary that he owns with his brother. He goes there for lunch and he gets violently ill. You know, he's thrown up and all just sick as can be. He goes to a doctor in town and he's like, oh, I'm not feeling well. I don't know what's wrong with me. And the doctor looks at him and says, if this happens again, let me know. So a couple days later, Henry goes back over to Martha's house and he is again getting sick. So he goes back to the doctor. Well, this time the doctor takes some samples of his vomit because he's fairly concerned that he's being poisoned. He takes some samples and sure enough, he's being poisoned with arsenic. Well, then they set up a sting. Henry is to go over to Martha's one last time. Martha serves him you know, tea, and he blows the whistle quite literally on her. The police come running in, and Martha attempts to dump the tea on the floor. The tea has got enough arsenic in it to kill 10 people. So now we're going to go to trial, and she pleads innocent. The trial still only lasts three days. They have exhumed the bodies of the, her brother-in-law, Louis, who had died of, supposedly died of typhoid. They exhumed the bodies of her husband, and her two oldest children, all of whom had been poisoned with arsenic from something called rough on rats. Turns out rough on rats is a pretty common thing to use back in the day for killing people. So the trial lasts three days, they sentence her to hang, which she was like the third woman ever hanged in Australia. They actually have her, the tombstone, like the little brick they put that on in a wall there and you can see it to this day. For my brows, I'm gonna use the IT Cosmetics Brow Power. So I can't do my brows and talk at the same time, obviously. So they find that she's poisoned her entire family, except for the baby. And I think that's where this all started at. When her baby died, something inside her mind sort of snapped. The weird part of this whole thing is kind of what happens afterwards. So for blush and lipstick, I'm using these two things. I think they go together beautifully. And I'm going to line my eyes with my John to Blue eyeliner. She's in jail. And the weirdest thing happened. Martha is happy. Probably the happiest she's ever been in her entire life. She gets in jail and she makes friends. Uh, the jailers just love her. They didn't know what to think of her because here's this sweet, ladylike, very demure woman who's always trying to cheer people up and make them happy. You know, she killed her entire family. I think that when her baby died, her young youngest died, and she got that life insurance money from her death, I think something sort of snapped in Martha's mind. She was severely abused. It actually, there's documents out there about the sexual and physical abuse she suffered from her own father other family members it wasn't even just him going from that to an abusive marriage uh, and it, having that abuse your whole life and then being given a moment where it isn't like that i don't think she was born bad or wanted to be bad exactly i think that life just wasn't real fair to her it's not really fair to anybody but she was born into a terrible family. The goal, the goalers, I think that's what they called them back then, jailers, they really liked Martha. She was so sweet to them and everything and so forbearing and she carried herself with such poise and ladylike behavior that they just couldn't believe that she would do this. Well, of course she had. No question about it. Patricide is one of the worst things you can do. I think there's a reason we react so violently to it. You know, when somebody kills their children, as human beings all group together and get really upset about it. Even if maybe there's a reason for that, so no excuse is good enough. And I understand that. I think that there's a good reason for it. Killing your young should be 
the worst thing out there. I think that's, you know, one of those universal truths. But I also think that there's something to be said for when somebody loses it, you know? And you're right. She killed her kids with poison and she didn't kill them all at once. And she killed her husband and she killed all these other people. She killed five in total. All right, so this is the e.l.f. Active Wear Eyeliner. I just put it on my waterline. So now I'm gonna go back into this. So Martha, after she hangs, they go back into her cell and they find this letter written out to her brother. They actually published it in the newspaper, word for word. And in it, she says she was innocent, but she had said the whole time. I don't think she was innocent. I think she did it. I don't think there's any doubt that she did it. But there's different levels of innocent, I guess. And I hope that, you know, whatever God she believed in is more understanding of the things she went through. I'll have links below, but keep in mind there are certain things that I just don't feel comfortable discussing on here. Some of the things she went through that they documented were pretty horrific. And in this letter, she tells her brother to bear up under all the weight of this sad blow that he has to carry on and that she will see him in a kinder world, in a kinder place. That she's going to heaven and she knows she's going to heaven because, you know, of her belief, I guess. This was in keeping with how she was while she was in jail. Alright, I'm going to use this for some bronzer and highlight. I think she's delusional. Really do. I think she had uh, this thing that happens to some women. I think the loss of her infant, Mabel, triggered it. Suddenly, these women think of this baby, and this baby must be in a better place. If the baby wasn't baptized, the church at the time would say that she wasn't. And that is just terrible to me, because it makes parents think all sorts of terrible things, especially parents who are you know, devout believers. This idea that she developed in her mind, this fantasy of sorts. Remember, they had said that she showed signs of mental illness from the time she was a kid from all the abuse she had suffered. I suspect that when her infant died, the fantasy that she had of her daughter being in a better place took over. She gets this money and she's able to do things she was never able to do. What she spent all that money on was those dead, her dead family. It's entirely possible that in her mind she believed what she was doing when she was poisoning her children was sending them to someplace better. Now we all know that that is crazy. Unfortunately, this still happens today. Andrea Yates is a perfect example of this. When we look at a tale like this, you ha it should be a cautionary tale. Martha Needle probably wouldn't have killed anyone had she not been brought into the world where she was sexually and physically abused from the time she was a very small child and then moved into a household that was with a husband at 17 that was as abusive and they created this perfect storm. I'm not absolving Martha of anything at all. I think killing your children is holy cow evil. I do understand that the mind can snap and turn into this fantasy and we must be aware of that. We must be aware that that can happen to people. If you are ever in a situation where you see something like this happening, you're willing to step in because child abuse has lifelong impact. I will be linking below some numbers to the child abuse hotline. Please, if you see something, say something. Uh, you can save not only that child's life, but potentially other people's. I have my Stila liquid metals right here, and I'm just gonna put a little bit of this on my inner corner. And my mascara that I forgot to put on too. This is pretty much my finished look. So let me know about what you thought of this case and my thoughts and ideas on it. I would love to hear from you about that. Please like, subscribe, and hit that bell. Otherwise, you won't get any notifications for me when I put up videos. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a great day. Bye!